All right, thanks. Uh, Coach Frost is here, and uh, we will move straight to questions. Um, Lincoln Journal star, Parker Gabriel. Parker, go ahead. Hey, Scott. I hope you're doing well. Um, I guess we'll just get right to it. Do you plan on, do you have a starting quarterback, and, and do you plan on announcing one this week? Uh, we're not going to announce much from uh, depth chart. I just think that's what's best for our team. Um, Adrian's going to be our quarterback. I feel like I got two guys uh, that are playing at a really high level. I've seen a lot of improvement out of Adrian this year. seen a lot of improvement out of Luke this year. Uh, both those guys are capable of uh, moving our offense and doing a great job. Associated Press, Eric Olson. Hey, Scott. Hey, uh, I was just curious. What do you think uh, the level of play is going to be, uh, not just for your team, but maybe across the Big Ten, given that, you know, it's been so long since you guys have had a game. There is no spring. The summer workouts were disjointed. And there's the question about whether you guys would even play. You know, it's hard for me to say. Uh, I, I, I got a lot of confidence in the level of play in this league. I um, think there's really good teams, really good coaches. So I don't have any doubt that people will be prepared and ready to go. Uh, you know, it kind of seems nationally like people are scoring more points. Maybe that's because we've had more practices to get timing on offense and less time to hit on defense. I don't know. Um, but I, I expect uh, Ohio State to be ready. Um, we're going to be as ready as I can make these guys. And um, I'm not, I, I expect it to be a good play on both sides of the ball. Is, is special teams, that was something that in a lot of the early season games uh, across the country that, that there are some struggles in special teams. Is, were you able to learn anything from kind of watching the other leagues as they got started a few weeks ago with regard to that and maybe some other areas like tackling? Yeah, you, know, you heard the stories about uh, a couple teams not doing any live tackling going into the game. Um, I don't think I needed to hear that to know that that's probably not a good idea. Um, obviously, you don't want to get punts blocked. That's cost a couple people some games. Uh, Sam McEwen, Omaha World Herald. Thanks for doing this, Scott. Hey, um, with with Jeff Brom's COVID positive test at Purdue, it kind of it kind of naturally brings up the question: um, if you had to, if you had to uh, have a coach coach for you. If you were to get a positive test, who, who would that coach be and, and, and have you kind of work through that process? Uh, well, first of all, I didn't know if you'd be on this without the free pizza at the press conference, Sam. So I'm hey, glad hey, to hey, see hey. you. <laughs> uh, you. Might be given, if I get COVID, I might be giving you a call. I don't know. Uh, no, we've talked about that internally. Um, got a lot of guys that would be capable. We know how we would handle it. Um, I, uh, I don't think I'd probably announce that in, unless that happened, but uh, we got a lot of guys with a ton of experience that would, that would do a great job in that role, uh, guys that have been in that role, um, coordinators. So uh, feel good about where we'd be. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but if it does, we'll be fine. How, how has the team been doing with the testing? Like, do you, do you have a, a sense of, of how everybody's been going through that process? Do you have any opt-outs to announce or uh, test-outs to announce, anything like that? No opt-outs, no test-outs. Um, you know, we've been at this quite a while, and um, I've said this before, but I don't think our guys are really afraid of this virus. They're in an age group in a health category that doesn't seem to affect them that much, so we have to make sure they're doing things the right way. Um, the, the testing is, is less onerous than I thought it would be. Um, they're doing a great job for us down. The, the people that are assigned to do it are doing a great job for us, making it easy and quick. Um, you know, we feel safe because we're getting tested every day. Uh, you know, I, I come here and come into work and go to practice and go to meetings and get tested and go home. Uh, so I'm around the same guys all the time and, we all know that everybody's getting tested every day. So um, I think we're in about as safe of an environment as we could possibly be. KLIN, Caleb Henry. Hi, Coach. Finally, game week. Where have you seen the most improvement for your team over the course of this extended fall? And then also personally, where have you improved the most or seen the most improvement in yourself over the course of this fall? 
Uh, there's been a lot of things that have happened this year that every coach in the country has had to deal with that they didn't expect to deal with. Um, I think we've done a good job of managing situations that you didn't expect. And um, in general, I think our coaching staff does a good job when there's pressure on them and we have to make quick decisions. Uh, it's kind of been that way all year. I feel like we have gotten better, uh, even with a lot of circumstances that might not lead you to have the opportunity to get better. So um, I think our coaching staff's done a good job with that. Um, this is a process that always has been since I came here. Uh, I've seen a lot of improvement in a lot of different position groups, and, and we're just going to keep keep getting better and uh, hope that's enough to win some football games. Omaha World Herald, Evan Bland. Hey, Scott, just curious if you uh, are able to announce players who maybe are in scholarships for this fall, and if so, uh, what they did uh, to earn those. Yeah, we got uh, three that I can announce right now. I think everybody was aware of uh, Luke Reimer getting put on scholarship. Um, we put Cade Warner on scholarship uh, and Damian Jackson on scholarship. We have one more that we're probably going to award before the fall is over, um, probably even before uh, the first game here. But those three have definitely earned it. Um, all three have been good leaders and good teammates for us. Uh, Luke's done some great things on the field. Damien's turned himself into a player that uh, could help us on the field as well as off and, and worked his butt off to get there. Um, and Cade he was voted captain and, and does a good job for us in practice and on, in games. So uh, those guys are very deserving and we're gr glad to reward them. Uh, from the dispatch in Columbus, Ohio, Bill Rabinowitz. Yes, Scott. Um, you and, and Ohio State, along with Iowa, were probably the, were the most vocal programs in terms of pushing the Big Ten to reinstate football. And then you you end up playing Ohio State in the opener. Uh, I think that was just coincidence. What are your thoughts on on this matchup and having to play Ohio State in the first week? Um, no, I don't think it was a coincidence. Uh, <laughs> but I, we're grateful to Ohio State. Um, you know, it, it's strange where you find allies in certain things, and I think we had an ally in Ohio State to try to get the season played. I don't think it would have got done without Dr. Borchers there, without uh, Ryan Day continuing to push it, Gene Smith continuing to push it. Uh, we certainly fought for it, too. We fought because we thought it was the right thing to do, to have football. Um, our kids wanted to play. We thought we could do it in a safe manner. Um, we weren't satisfied with the decision to not play, and... Uh, kept trying to find opportunities to find a way to get it done. And um, and we're grateful to Ohio State for having done the same thing. Um, now, it's two teams that I think have wanted to play all along, uh, playing each other in the in the first game. Uh, we got a ton of respect for them. I said after last season, uh, that was one of the best college football teams that I've been on a field with. Uh, I think they were one of the best teams in the country and could have easily won everything last year. Um, that being said, I thought we did a really good job of keeping the game close uh, last year for about five minutes. Um, and, and just the idea, it's the first game, you're not going to have tape to go on. You just have to kind of wing it as, you know, and, and prepare the best you can. How, how much does that add to the challenge? It adds to the challenge. Uh, and we got a different offensive coordinator. They have a different defensive coordinator. Um, I would expect that we're both going to be similar on both sides, but you never know exactly what you're going to be looking at until you get on the field. And um, that's certainly a challenge in preparation. The biggest challenge in preparing for Ohio State is the is just the talent they have on the team. Um, we know this is one of the best teams in the country, and we have a, a lot of work cut out for us. Thanks, Scott. Kevin Suits, Channel 10 11. Hi, Coach. Talking your players, you get the sense of excitement and a little bit of relief that you guys are finally at uh, game week. What are your thoughts as you think back to the extended offseason you've had and um, getting to this week now that it's uh, five days away from the opening game? Uh, I'm excited it's here. There, there's been a lot of times when we thought we were fighting a losing battle to get football, to have football. We didn't know if we were practicing for a reason or not, if we were ever going to play or if we were just out there practicing for, for nothing, with nothing to look forward to. Um, it's been a battle. Like I just uh, said, I think Ohio State its probably the ones that led the battle. We've certainly been in lockstep with them to try to get football back. Um, so I'm going to root for them in every single game except this first one uh, because I'm, I'm uh, grateful to them for 
um, going shoulder and shoulder and fighting to get this back. Our kids are excited to play. We're excited to play. There's There's been a lot of moments where I didn't think we'd get here, uh, but now that we're here, uh, I think playing football was the right thing to do, and, and we're excited to be a part of it. Andrew Ward, KLKN. Hey, Scott, I was going to ask you about your captains. Uh, just why do you think those five guys were chosen by their teammates? Uh, they're, they've all done a good job uh, leading. Um, there's been a lot of times I said this, a lot of times this offseason where the coaches haven't been able to be involved and the, the players had to step up and do a lot of things. Um, it's not just these five. I think there's a lot of guys that the team looked to as leaders, a lot of players on our team that got votes. Um, but these five were uh, out in front in the voting, and um, I think the players respect them and look to them uh, as leaders. 24-7 Sports, Brian Christofferson. Hey, Scott. I know you had a good battle going on at running back and still do have some – some of those young guys emerged as guys you're you feel good about putting next in line to uh, Dedrick Mills off the bat. Yeah, we feel good about it. Um, you know, we're we're going to be a uh, little green at a few positions. As a coach, I think you want to get old and stay old. Um, have experienced guys, veteran guys. Um, seems like this is going to be the third year now where we have a few positions where. We just don't have very many veterans. Running back's kind of one of them. Diedrich's obviously got a lot of experience, and anybody else we put in there, for the most part, is going to be pretty green. Uh, but I'm I'm pleased with the progress of those guys, and and feel like we got a number of guys that we can use. Is Ronald on a pitch count per se, or is he a guy you can you can go? He can play as much as needed. Um, we're going to have to watch him a little bit, make sure we don't overload him. Uh, but really, no different than anybody else. Uh, he hasn't shown me any reason to believe that uh, he can't carry the ball as much as we need him to. CBSSports.com, Dennis Dodd. Hey, Scott. Nice to see you again. Um, knowing knowing what you've seen, I guess, up to this point in the college football season, what level of concern is there that, uh, you know, the Big Ten can get through this na- thing nine straight weeks without a bye? I think there's concern. Um I think if if you want to play um, and you find ways to play, I think you'll find ways to play. If if you find ways and reasons to not play, I think you can uh, accomplish that goal too. And, and do you, do you feel a certain kinship? I guess just what you mentioned about Ryan Day. You guys are about the same age, uh, and you mentioned how you got here together and getting football back. Do you feel a certain kinship with him? Did you talk to him through this process? Yeah, I talked to Ryan quite a bit. Um, I think we probably developed a little closer relationship through this. I, I got to give most of the credit for this to Ohio State. Um, you know, we, we might have been uh, one of the sounding gongs in this that we're saying we want to play it. I don't think it would have got done without their doctor taking the lead, uh, figuring out a way to present it to the presidents to get football back. Uh, Dr. Borchers deserve, deserves a lot of credit for this. Um, and I, I think they did a good job at Ohio State kind of bringing it all together and, and presenting a, a plan that allowed us to 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 get back to, to doing what we should have probably been doing all the time. But, again, that's why I say Ohio State, I think, did a good job of finding a, a way to play and reasons to play rather than looking for reasons that maybe you shouldn't. Thank you. Thank you. Lincoln Journal star Steve Sippel. Uh, good afternoon, Scott. Sip. The uh, – the uh, I'm wondering what maybe was the separator at quarterback, like what, why Adrian was able to ultimately win that. Um, and, and I don't know how much of that was experience. Um, for, first, let me say, I, it, I don't know how much separation there is. Uh, I think we have two first string quarterbacks. Uh, that's the way we feel about them. Um, you know, I, I really believe if Luke would have been the one that had already been playing and, and we would have had the same camp, it would probably be Luke. Um, they, they both had uh, tremendous camps, and, and we see ourselves as having luxury of having two starters. Hey, one other question. If I were to say to you I think Ohio State's maybe defensive front isn't quite as good as last year, how would you respond? <laughs> well, Chase Young's about the best pass rusher I've been on a college football field with. Um, so I'm sure it's not easy to replace a guy like that, but 
Uh, they get four and five star guys every year, um, and have a lot of them. The, the guys that played besides Chase beat us last year too. So um, I'd probably have to argue with you if you if you told me they weren't as good. Thank you very much. WWT Joe Nugent. Hey, Scott. Um, Adrian Martinez named one of the five captains, and he did it in an offseason where he did not know if he was going to be the starting quarterback. What does that say about his leadership to uh, to earn one of these spots despite dealing with adversity? Uh, Adrian's a great human being on top of being a good player. Luke McCaffrey's a great human being on top of being a, a really good player. So um, I think both those guys are seen as leaders of the team, the, the voting – um certainly kind of proved that um but at, at every single position there's a competition to see who the starting guy is going to be so uh quarterback was no different um i don't know how much separation there was between the two but um they both did great job and, and adrian did a good job on and off the field got time for three or four more quick ones for coach um adam rittenberg espn.com Hey, Scott, you know, Ohio State's obviously had great players uh, for a long time, but the quarterback position, you saw Dwayne a couple of years ago, and now Justin, both of those guys, and one is in the NFL, one projects high for the NFL. How does how has that position at, at, at that Ohio State, in your mind, evolved here uh, under Coach Day the last few years? Uh, you know, we went up to Ohio State two years ago, and I didn't think they played their best game, and uh, we kept, kept ourselves in the game. Uh, last year, I thought they – they played really well and had a really good team, and um, we were outmatched. Um, both quarterbacks were really good. I, I, you know, Justin Fields to me is is the better of the two. That's not take anything away from Dwayne, but um, for what they want their quarterback to do, he's really efficient. He can create plays when he needs to. He can take off and run and really hurt you. Um, so he he's a phenomenal player and surrounded by a, a bunch of other tremendous players. Uh, 11warriors.com, Dan Hope. Hey, Scott, just wondering how hard is it to prepare for a defense like Ohio State's when they've got a new defensive coordinator and you haven't been able to see them on film? That certainly adds to the challenge. Uh, again, I thought we had some good plays for them last year, and the, the biggest challenge in playing a team like this is you'll have a gap, you'll have a crease, you'll have a little bit of space, and it gets erased really fast um, because of the talent they have on the field. Um Obviously, they have some really good coaches, and they have, and they do now. I'm sure those guys will put them in a good position, and we have to do a good job adjusting to what we see early on in the game. Thanks, Scott. Parker Gabriel, Lincoln Journal Star. Uh, hey, Scott, just a, sort of a cleanup question. Do you have any other guys that count in the, in the injury category that you won't have uh, for the season that you know of? Uh, only other one I, I announce is uh, Javen Wright. Uh, had an MCL tear, um, had to have surgery on, and we'll, we'll probably be missing him for the year. Thanks. Thanks. Two more quick ones. Mitch Sherman, The Athletic. Scott, uh, Scott uh, kind of backing uh, up a little bit on this, you, you, know, you kind of hinted at the answer, but obviously the question that's hanging over every program every week in the Big Ten is hitting the numbers, um, being within the, the protocols that are more strict than every other league, um, are, are you guys right now in the shape that you want to be in uh, with the game five, six days away? Yeah, I don't anticipate us having an issue with the uh, standards and protocols set by the Big Ten um, for a bunch of reasons. We're, I think our medical staff's doing a good job keeping people safe. Um, we've already had enough on our team that have either tested positive or had, have antibodies that I think we've uh, gotten to a place where we're a little bit less at ri less at risk. Um, also, the 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 rules for when you can play and when you can't. Um, I think it's going to be hard for teams to to get in red red. And um, so I, I feel good about our chances of being able to play without going into that much deeper. Last one for Coach Sam McEwen. Hey Scott. Um... Your, your kicking situation, uh, you had to replace your field goal kicker, your punter, 
and your kickoff guy. Um, where do you think that that those positions are at right now, and how confident are you that Coach Rutledge and the specialists have made significant improvements over last season? Uh, I think we'll punt the ball better, and I think we'll kick the ball better. Um, feel good about a uh, couple guys that we have that are new. Feel good about some guys that have been here. And special teams has certainly uh, cost us games instead of helping us win games. Um, getting the right specialists on the field is an important part of that, and I think we're in better position there. How has Rutledge handled this? Because it's obviously been odd uh, the last nine months. How have you seen him work with the specialists and just the groups overall? Well, you know, he's he's off the field for us, so he's able to kind of coordinate. Um, our coaches have to do the coaching of it. Um, Rutt certainly helped us by giving us a guy that can devote his time to it. Um, it's still on the assistant coaches to, to take the plans and get them executed with the players. But um, I, I think that that formula has helped us. All right. Thank you, Coach. And we will have Matt Farniak here in a couple minutes to finish up.